Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about uh, inverse trig functions. So um, we'll do inverse sine, cosine, and tangent uh, in the next few videos, and then the, uh, the other three inverse trig functions will come a little bit later uh, after we talked about some more things. Um, but anyway, uh, so here d dx of inverse sine of x equals 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. So I think that's actually pretty interesting that uh, if you take a derivative of this inverse trig function, you get something that has no trig in it anywhere at all. Uh, you just have this uh, x squared and there's a square root. So again, a derivative of inverse sine, uh, sometimes also called arc sine, uh, derivative of that is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's see why that's true. Um, we're not going to use the limit definition. Uh, I really wouldn't even know where to go with that. But um, what we're going to do is use the inverse function theorem again. So um, here, let's say y equals uh, inverse sine of x. And remember, that's the same thing as uh, arc sine. Right? That's the same thing as the arc sine of x. Um, but let's just go ahead and stick with this first notation up here, um, just because it'll make a little more sense with how we do things here. But it doesn't really matter. Um, so anyway, y equals inverse sine of x. So that means uh, x equals the sine of y, right? Uh, just take the sine of both sides, and we have this. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there are some technical details to worry about, and we'll actually talk about those uh, later in the video. But for now, uh, x equals sine of y. So what does that mean? Uh, that means dx dy. So remember, the derivative of x with respect to y um, is going to be what? Well, sine of y, take the derivative of that, you just get cosine of y. All right, so we just have cosine of y. All right, so now we're going to use the inverse function theorem. So uh, dy dx, okay, dy dx is what we want to find, right? And the inverse function theorem tells us that dy dx is 1 divided by dx dy. Okay, so um, dx dy we just found out is uh, cosine of y, so this is 1 over cosine of y. And uh, 1 over cosine of y is actually secant of y. Now, again, uh, dy dx, our variable is x, right? So we don't want our final answer in terms of y. So how do we get rid of y there? Well, uh, now we got to be a little bit careful about what's actually going on. Um, so we have to think about the uh, domain and range of the inverse sine function. Uh, specifically, we actually just have to think about the range. Um, so the range, remember the range is the set of uh, all the output values of a function. So uh, it's the set of all the possible y values. In this case, all the y values. Um, so that's what a range of a function is. That's a pre-calculus thing, uh, I think. So the range of uh, inverse sine of x is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Uh, square brackets because they include the endpoints. So in other words, uh, negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to pi over 2. All right. So that's the range of the inverse sine function, um, basically. OK, so uh, this y here, you know, that's kind of the same y as uh, this one up here, right? And that's the same y uh, as this one here and that one here, OK? So uh, this y is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So um, what we're going to do is uh, go to the uh, xy plane and think about quadrants and stuff like that. So uh, a lot of trig kind of coming back to haunt us, but that's OK. Uh, trig's all right. That's good stuff. So here's x-axis. Here's a uh, y-axis. Um, so y okay, is uh, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So where does that put it in terms of quadrants? Well, um, here, an angle of 0 would be on the uh, x-axis, right, on the positive x-axis. So negative pi over 2 is down here positive pi over 2 is up here, so y is somewhere in here. It's in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 4, all right? So that means uh, there's going to be two different triangles we have to look at. Um, so there's going to be one triangle. Let's use different colors then. Uh, this triangle here, all right? Okay, so if y is in quadrant 1, then this would be the angle y right here. Okay, this angle would be y um, right there. If y is in quadrant 1, then we're going to have um, a uh, triangle like that to look at. But what if y is in quadrant 4? In other words, what if y is negative? What if it's uh, some negative number? Uh, then it's going to be 
our triangle is going to be down here. Okay, and in this case, y goes down like that. So that's y. Uh, but in either case, uh, that's these are right triangles. So that's a right angle, and uh, this other one I'm about to fill in here is also a right angle. Okay, so now let's see. Um, let's go back here. Uh, we want to get rid of y, basically. Here's secant of y. We want to get rid of that and just express it in terms of x. So here's what y looks like. Okay, y is just one of these angles here. We've got to figure out what's the secant of y. Um, well, to figure out the secant of y, we have to know something else first. Do we know something else about y? Yeah, actually, we do. We know that um, y is the inverse sine of x. Uh, therefore, the sine of y equals x. <clears throat> okay. So this is what we're going to use here, the sine of y equals x. So let's come back up here and use that. Um, so if the sine of y equals x, uh, remember what the sine is in terms of right triangles. It's opposite over hypotenuse. So let's look at this uh, triangle up here. Um, here's the angle y. Okay, it's this angle right here. So the opposite is going to be this side, and the hypotenuse is this side. So if sine of y is x, that's the same thing as saying x over 1. So let's call the opposite side x, and the hypotenuse will just be 1, just for simplicity. Uh, x, and then this will be 1. So let's get rid of these axis labels, um, just so they don't cause any confusion. Okay. So um, here's the angle y. Sine of y is x, uh, and uh, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so x over 1. Uh, and actually the same thing down here, right? sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so this will be x over y. Okay, so uh, nothing's different with these two triangles here. And again, um, why are we looking at two triangles? Well, because y could be in quadrant 4, or it could be in quadrant 1, and we don't know which one it is, so we have to explore all possibilities and see what happens. All right? So that's kind of a subtle detail to worry about there. Um, okay, so what happens next? Well, now uh, we just got to figure out, okay, what's this missing side here? Um, Oh, you know what, I'm sorry. I should label this 1, not y. Alright, um, so x uh, and 1, x and 1. So now we got to figure out, alright, what's this missing side here? Well, it's actually going to be the same thing in both, right? Um, so let's just call this side uh, b. I don't think we use b yet, no, let's call it b. So we know that um, in both of these triangles, actually, uh, b squared plus x squared equals 1 squared, I guess, right? from the Pythagorean theorem. So in this upper triangle, b squared plus x squared equals 1 squared, and then down here, uh, b squared plus x squared equals 1 squared. Uh, so 1 squared is just 1, so let's just do that. So then uh, b is, uh, okay, well let's go ahead and do it like this, b squared equals 1 minus x squared. So then b is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now is it actually the positive or the negative root? How do we know which one to take? Well, it's going to be the positive root because um, the distance is being measured from the origin out to here. And this is the positive direction, all right? So because these triangles are in the first and the fourth quadrants, um, this distance here is going to be positive because it's measured from the origin out to here in the positive direction. So that's why we take the positive root, all right? So b is uh, root 1 minus x squared. So... Um, now what's secant of y? Secant of y, uh, let's go ahead and erase all this stuff here. But we'll leave this here. So secant of y is what? Um, remember secant is 1 over cosine, right? Uh, so secant is going to be um, hypotenuse divided by adjacent, right? And in both of these triangles, that's 1 divided by b. So uh, secant of y is just 1 divided by b. But again, what's b? It's this guy right here. So that's 1 over root 1 minus x squared. Um, and that's where that formula comes from. Right, so just to recap what we did real quick. Um, we started off by saying, okay, let y equal the inverse sine function, uh, the inverse sine of x. So that means x equals sine of y. And therefore, uh, dx dy equals cosine of y. So we want dy dx. Uh, inverse function theorem tells us that that's equal to 1 over dx dy. We know dx dy is cosine of y, so we have 1 over cosine of y. That equals secant of y. So we've got to figure out, okay, what's secant of y in terms of just x? Um, so then we said, okay, uh, let's go ahead and use some triangles to do that. But we've got to be careful because y, um, okay, this y came from over here, right? It came from here. 
So we have to look at the range of the inverse sine function because y equals the inverse sine of x. So we have to worry about the range of the inverse sine function. And the range of the inverse sine function is uh, this interval here, negative pi over 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to pi over 2. So this means uh, that if uh, negative pi over 2 is less than or equal to y is less than 0, uh, then that means y is in quadrant 4, this triangle here. And if y is positive and uh, less than or equal to pi over 2, um, or I guess less than pi over 2, uh, then it'll be in quadrant 1. All right. So we got to look at both of these triangles here, because y could be in either of these quadrants, so we have to examine all of our possibilities. And luckily, um, both of these possibilities turned out to give us uh, exactly the same result, which was this. Uh, okay, we said uh, this adjacent side, we just called it b, and we found from the Pythagorean theorem that b is the square root of 1 minus x squared, because uh, we know this angle is y, this angle is y, and we also know from the beginning that sine of y equals x, and that's the same thing as saying x over 1, so the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, so opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1, um, and then this side b we just found from the Pythagorean theorem, uh, and then secant to y is adjacent, or sorry, uh, hypotenuse over adjacent, which is 1 over b, and luckily it's the exact same thing for both triangles, so this worked out uh, okay here. And that's where this formula comes from. So a lot of uh, subtle little details to worry about, but that's pretty much the general idea um, for the derivative of the inverse sine function.